Hi everyone, my name is Robius, and today I'm here to present to you the 10th episode in this new iteration of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I review the depiction of characters in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and use that as a launching point to compare it with the historical source material and start a discussion. Consequently, be aware of potential story spoilers ahead. Today's episode will center on Karl Marx, the controversial 19th century philosopher, journalist, and political economist best known for pioneering the school of thought commonly referred to as Marxism. To begin, we'll start the video by exploring the history behind the man, prior to his first appearance in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Born on May 5, 1818 in the Kingdom of Prussia, Karl was a homeschooled student until the age of 12. He then attended a progressive high school and experienced the government's influence against dissenting ideologies when the police raided the establishment, clearing it of what they called liberal propaganda. In his early adult life, Marx wished to study philosophy, but was instead pushed towards law by his father, and by 1836, he was engaged to a long-term friend, the Prussian baroness Jenny von Westphalen. As an adult, Marx continued his studies of law and philosophy later moving to Berlin. Here, Karl joined the Young Hegelians, a group of anti-establishment students labeled as radical thinkers who admired the works of J.W.F. Hegel. Marx collaborated with fellow Hegelians on philosophical works while also completing his thesis, which earned him a PhD in mid-1841. With his ideologies limiting potential career options, in 1842 Marx instead became a journalist for a radical newspaper based in Köln. Embracing his new position, Karl used it to level heavy criticisms towards European governments and politicians with whom he disagreed, eventually leading the Prussian government to step in and insist they would review the written content prior to its publication, thus censoring any radical thoughts. In mid-1843, after seven years of engagement, Marx finally married his longtime fiancée, Jenny. Thereafter, they moved to France and had their first of seven children. While in Paris, he worked for two different radical leftist newspapers. In August of 1844, an important meeting occurred at a French cafe where Marx encountered a fellow socialist named Friedrich Engels. Together, they shared ideas and views on the class system. These common interests led to collaborative efforts between the individuals. Throughout this time, it is believed that Marx developed the early outline for what would eventually become known as Marxism concentrating on economic theories, the role of labor, materialism, and socialism. However, by mid-1845, Marx's paper was shut down and he was expelled from the country when the French government complied with a request from the Prussian monarchy, thus forcing him to move to Brussels on the condition he abstained from publishing contemporary political works. In this new space, Marx instead wrote a general criticism towards certain popular schools of philosophy for being too rooted in the theoretical and not making a connection to actual physical results. Within a few months of his arrival, he was joined by Friedrich Engels, and together they visited England to learn about the English economy and their views on socialism. Soon after, the pair collaborated on a book entitled The German Ideology a satirical piece that was censored by the government which concentrated on the importance of materialism when understanding history. Building upon the momentum of this initial product, the two developed the idea that for the socialist ideology to succeed, it needed to appeal to an entire societal class and not simply a large group of individuals. It became clear that if a revolution was ever to occur, it had to be desired and fueled by the working class. Creating a few manuscripts that embodied these ideas, Marx became further involved with the secret socialist organization known as the League of the Just. Sharing his theories, the members were convinced that by making themselves into a public entity, a de facto political party, only then would they be able to reach the working class and establish a movement. Having won them over, in mid-1847, the League of the Just rebranded itself and entered the public eye as the Communist League with Marx and Engels authoring much of its literature. Ultimately, this led to the 1848 publication of the pair's most recognized work, The Communist Manifesto. Fundamentally, this pamphlet held within the core tenements of the society and expressed that the Communist League was the sole entity that fought for the proletariat with the goal of overthrowing capitalism and replacing it with socialism. It's important to understand that this was a tumultuous time, with rebellions and protests erupting around Europe that year, with the French overthrowing their monarchy in favor of a second republic just being one example. 
While residing in Belgium, Marx was accused of funding the armament of local workers who sought revolution. Despite the legitimacy of this claim still being argued to this day, Marx was nonetheless forced to escape the country to avoid incarceration, at which point he fled to the newly established French Republic. Subsequently, the Communist League was relocated to Paris and was joined by the newly established German Workers' Club. Marx then traveled to Caen, hoping to spark a domino effect whereby the bourgeoisie would turn on the monarchy and then make way for the proletariat to overthrow the bourgeoisie. To this effect, he funded the publication of a new radical newspaper to help spread his message across Europe. Marx's efforts were met with heavy resistance. He was brought on trial multiple times, his newspaper was censored, and finally he was identified as a political threat and was ordered to leave. This exile translated into an 1849 move to London, which was paralleled by the relocation of the Communist League. Unfortunately for him, within the following year, the Communist League was nearly usurped by an internal movement that wished to inspire spontaneous uprisings within the working class, leading to Europe-wide revolutions. Marx and Engels, staunch believers that societal change must occur in stages, first through the support of the bourgeoisie in ousting the monarchy, and then secondly in the proletariat's uprising against the bourgeoisie, adamantly maintained that this new, radical, disorganized method would lead to catastrophic failure and the collapse of the Communist League. In the end, the pair succeeded in rallying the organization to their way of thinking, and the radical members split from the Communist League. Throughout this period, Marx became an international correspondent for multiple newspapers, using this position to help spread his message to the working class around the world. In addition, he and Engels came into conflict with other socialists whom they criticized for their unrealistic view that a revolution could simply occur at any time, whereas this pair had determined that it would likely only develop successfully during a period of economic downfall. These discussions led Marx to invest more time into his economic and capitalist studies, feeling that a lack of understanding in these topics hindered their progress. These studies culminated in the 1859 publication of his first large-scale economic piece, which quickly gained public traction for its analytical views on currency in a capitalist economy. Fueled by the interest in his recent publication, Marx spent the following years preparing what many consider to be his life's work, a three-part political, economic, and philosophical series, originally named Das Kapital, and an additional manuscript known as the Theories of Surplus Value. Anecdotally, Carl then acquired a copy of The Origin of Species, authored by Charles Darwin, within a year of its release, and upon reading it, developed an admiration for the Englishman. Marx saw parallels between their writings in terms of similar forms of analysis and interpretation within different contexts. This led him to quote Darwin in some of his works, and even have a brief correspondence with the man about their shared desire in seeking knowledge. Around this time, Marx also applauded the works of Charles Dickens for bringing to light social issues and realities he felt were ignored by the existing political structure. In 1864, Marx then became a founding member of the International Workingmen's Association. Nevertheless, the first manuscript in his collection, which was published in 1867, contained Karl's views on capitalist production and its effects on the labor force, how the contemporary economy was established around the system, and how he felt it would ultimately fail. This first volume exploded in popularity. Although only the first of these volumes was published during Marx's lifetime, his friend Friedrich Engels would be the one to share the remaining works with the public after Karl's eventual passing. Historically speaking, it was after this initial publication that we first met Karl Marx in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. According to the game, in 1868, he identified the twin assassins Jacob and Evie Fry as defenders of the people and requested their assistance in supporting the working class. The twins cooperated, warding off the police who were spying on Marx, and allowed him to organize a meeting with his allies. Unfortunately, Karl was betrayed by another ally who gave away the location of their assembly. After evading capture, Marx then spoke with the traitor and expressed his disappointment, emphasizing the idea that success could only be attained through unity before letting the man leave. Following this initial encounter, a series of side missions with an indirect timeline became available, in which the Fry twins continued to support Marx's efforts in London. These included acquiring undeniable proof which highlighted a factory's abusive behavior and neglect of workplace safety preventing a member of Marx's organization from attacking the House of Parliament with explosives in response to his son's labor-related death, 
and ensuring that one of his reformation rallies not devolve into violence by silently removing anarchists who'd been planted in the crowd in hopes of creating a bloody outcome. Nonetheless, the Fry Twins succeeded in helping their ally, with him finally asking if they would like to join the Workers' Party. Although they appreciated the offer, the assassins each declined for their own reasons, with Marx still thanking them for helping him and the working class. Since that represented the final encounter with Marx and Syndicate, we're now able to move on to the next, brief portion of the video and discuss his life after the game. Historically speaking, in his later years, Marx succumbed to illness and lost some of his physical vigor, thus shifting from a position as an activist in the field to more of a commentator on current developments and an advisor to more involved participants. Although the exact cause of his ailment has been argued, different sources have proposed that he may have suffered from long-term liver problems, a skin-related infection, or perhaps that it was simply the product of his unfortunate habit of drinking and smoking heavily while not prioritizing sleep or a proper diet. Throughout these years, he continued working on his projects, many of which he would never publish. In the aftermath of his wife's death in late 1881, it is believed Marx developed bronchitis, which consequently led to his own death on March 14, 1883. Having reached the conclusion of Karl Marx's life, we can proceed to the final chapter in the video, review everything we've learned about this individual, and compare it to his depiction in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Let's start with the portions of his portrayal that the game got right. First, in a few intervals, Marx makes reference to being harassed by authorities in the past, listing off Paris, Brussels, and Cogne as places where he experienced conflict, implying it was the reason why he moved to London. He can then be seen throughout his side missions as a defender of the proletariat and the working class, supporting those he felt weren't represented in government while pushing a message of solidarity. In contrast, considering how brief his appearance in the game actually was, short of his relationship with two members of a secret order of assassins who helped him during those invented side missions clearly being completely fictionalized, most of the other points worth discussing center more on minor historical variations or different interpretations of the individual. The major point of discussion when it comes to Marx's appearance in Syndicate is his portrayal as more of a reformer than a revolutionary. Although this may not seem correct to many players, and it could be argued otherwise based on a vast array of conflicting records on the man, I'd like to explain why I believe he was shown in this light. Given his previous conflicts with governing bodies, with some accusing him of funding an armed revolution, if those claims are to be believed, they establish a reasonable interpretation of Marx as a pro-violence revolutionary. However, all of these accusations and the associated circumstances occurred in his earlier life. As Marx aged and saw how quick, violent rebellions would rise in certain countries, often only to be quelled rather quickly, he and Friedrich Engels adopted a different view in which they believed the revolution could only succeed if it was accomplished in progressive stages. In addition, certain sources propose that following the passing of the Second Reform Act in 1867, also known as the Representation of the People Act, the franchise in Britain grew significantly, and due to these changes for the workers and the so-called class struggle, Marx adapted his philosophy to the current circumstances. This meant not necessarily concentrating on overthrowing the government, but rather using democracy as a way of achieving socialism, enacting change politically, and pushing the benefits of workers' unions. Having said all that, when considering whether or not Karl Marx was fairly depicted in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, in terms of his personality and behavior, I'd have to say that in general, yes he was, but that depending on which sources you believe, you may feel as though he had been a little toned down politically for the game's sake. Either way, however you personally interpret this controversial individual, what can be said is that the game did well in representing the divisiveness within Marx's movement, with some more progressive, democracy-based approaches coming into conflict with more anarchy-oriented avenues, as some individuals pursued nonviolent change, while others demanded a radical, bloody revolution. Lastly, I'd also like to quickly mention that I liked how Syndicate had the Fry Twins helping Marx due to an overlap between his politics and their ideologies, however, it had them both stop short from actually joining his movement, thus making them more like allies of opportunity rather than two parties with the exact same goals. And with that, we have finished today's video. If you enjoyed the content, help us spread the word about this series by sharing it with your friends and checking out the other available episodes. Should you have a request for a future video, please leave it in the comments. My sources for making this video can be found in the description bar below. 
thanks for watching.